Hello guys, we're Neuro Imaging students at University College London and today we're going to learn how an MRI machine works. So why don't you join us? Let's go! MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. It's a technique that allows doctors and researchers to look inside the body with great detail and without any harm of radiation. Real MRI scanners are very large and expensive machines, consisting of several thick coils and a huge superconducting magnet, which can generate a very strong magnetic field. The latest MRI machines can generate a magnetic field as strong as 7 Teslas. However, instead of using a magnetic field generated by an expensive superconducting magnet, we'll cheat and use a much cheaper, weaker, but freely available magnetic field the magnetic field of Earth itself. With the help of tearing over an MRI scanner, we can amplify this magnetic field that is only around 40 microteslas uh, by about 250 times through so use of polarization coils. The tearing over can also generate a gradient and radio frequency coil, just like the real MRI scanner. The Earth's magnetic field reaches all over the planet but its local strength is influenced by the building and electronic noise that is electricity, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and other things. This is why we first need to find a location within the room where the field is the strongest. Right there! We have now aligned the scanner with the magnetic field. However, we also need to ensure that it is homogeneous. In other words, the same everywhere within the scanner. This can be done through use of gradient coil that evens the field out in the X, Y and Z directions through a process called shimming. But what is magnetic field actually used for? If we hit a glass of wine, it produces sound. This sound is a natural vibrating frequency of the glass. If we subject the glass to the tones of the same frequency, it will vibrate. Oops. These particular frequencies are called resonance frequencies and are different for different materials. The human body is made up of 70% water. So what happens if we consider bottled water instead of a wine glass? How can we make it resonate? It's time to slide our participant into the MRI scanner. Water is composed of hydrogen and oxygen atoms. The hydrogen molecules consist of a single proton, a charged particle which spins producing a magnetic field called magnetic moment. We can look at protons as spinning tops. In the absence of a magnetic field, the protons are orientated randomly. When we apply the magnetic field to the protons, the protons will start to spin at higher energy state and align to the applied magnetic field. The process is called longitudinal magnetization. To create an image, we need to measure the signal. To do this, we need to excite the magnetized protons. In the MRI scanner, this is done with RF cores. These magnets are used to transmit a second magnetic field to the water protons, disturbing their alignment. This will decrease the longitudinal magnetization. After a while, a new magnetic field will occur through a process called transverse magnetization. Also, the excited protons will start to lose energy, mainly through various relaxation processes, by either interacting with each other or with the surrounding environment. Until now, we have only created a uniform field to align the water protons with this field. However, this is not enough to make a signal which is enough to create an image. To acquire a signal, we need to excite the magnetized protons in our uniform magnetic field. The principle of exciting protons is based on something called Lamo precession. To acquire an image, the MRI machine matches the Lamo frequency with a radio pulse, causing resonance. This excites magnetic moments and flips them from longitudinal to the transverse plane. The magnetic moments will also process around the axis of longitudinal magnetic field at the Lama frequency. 
The rate of precession depends on the strength of the field, creating a signal strong enough for the machine to detect. The times associated with this relaxation process are called T2 and T1, respectively. In general, T2 is shorter than T1. This changes in energy in using electrical signal. Since different tissues have different molecular environments and compositions, the relaxation times are also different for them. This difference is reflected in the signal intensities on the scale. Finally, the computer receives the signal and converts it into an image. signal we need to excite an inside proton now uh, 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 uh. Okay.